Hello, hello. Welcome back to episode 117 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and we should stop saying that we can't do things. Instead of duplicant, it should be duplicant. 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 I like that. There should be like an uncard that's like a... a Oh, what's the what's a du- like a like a pelican, but it's a duplicant. Pelicant. Pelicant. <laughs> it's a it's a non flying bird. Pelican. It was just a penguin. Okay, and I'm your other host, Mike. And uh, I heard Mark Rosewater was having trouble picking one of the creature types for an upcoming unset. He wasn't sure if he wanted a pirate sliver or a pirate snake. What sounds better, sliver me timbers or slither me timbers? Oh, I like sliver me timbers. Sliver me timbers. More. All right, we need a sliver pirate then in the next unset. Sli- that's more fun. Please listen carefully. True, but we sliver want a new, pirate. We want a new one. Though. A new one that literally <laughs> says sliver pirate. <laughs> and this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering, but mostly Commander. Oh boy. Do we have announcements? Oh yeah. That came out. So last week's episode we recorded early. Um Producer Ryan's still on vacation. Hope he's enjoying his time. So we are going to talk this week about some things that came out. We had some time to digest the news um, from the Showcase 2021. So this happened back on August 24th. And we have new sets. We have secret layers. We have supplemental sets. We have a new unset. So we're going to go over each of them, starting with secret layers out of time, super drop. So this is um actually for sale currently and it involves uh or includes kamigawa ink um it includes teferi's time trouble artist series johannes voss artist series thomas baxa and then also math is for blockers um you can get it in all foil you can get it in non-foil um these are really cool so the the kamigawa ink is uh based on um it, a traditional Japanese brushwork. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I actually play only one of these cards. So I don't know if I want to order this one. I play Machiko Kanda Truth Seeker in my um, uh, Neon BS Steam Speaker deck. Okay. So I would really like to get this one and I would like to get this in foil. So I really need the Kami of the Crescent Moon for my Jeskai deck, my Jeskai Blink deck. So. Maybe we can find someone. I mean, I'll take the Toshiro Umazawa too, because that one's just really cool. Yeah. We can find someone who needs a Heartless Saitsugu and a Reki. We, maybe we can go in on it together or something. Yeah. Yeah. So non foil, $30. Foil, $40. Yeah. We also have Teferi's Time Travel. So this is um, based on uh, artwork. It's like an old style. So they wrote out a Planeswalker as, as if they were written with text from like real early on in Magic. So it's. It's just a wall of text with Dak Faden, Karn the Great Creator, and Teferi Time Raveler. Um, now, I, I would say I would want this, but I took the Teferi Time Raveler out of my cube because mm-hmm. it was just, if it's banned everywhere, I probably should just take uh, that as a as a sign and go, it's probably too Maybe powerful for your, cube too. your Ravnica cube. But <laughs> Dak Faden's a really popular cube card. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, th- this one's really, really cool. Uh, if you're looking to get this, uh, you can get that in non-foil for thirty dollars. Um, not not available in foil here. Uh, Johannes Voss Artist Series. You've got Sphere of Safety, Karmic Guide, Carpet of Flowers, and Sanctum Prelate. Very popular cards played in Commander. Beautiful artwork, and um, this Carpet of Flowers reprint has actually brought the price even more down than when it got reprinted in Mystery Booster. So even it's, more down. Yeah, even <laughs> more down. Thirty dollars for non-foil, forty dollars for foil. I remember when Carpet of Flowers was over thirty dollars. So the fact that you can get one plus three other cards for thirty dollars with really sweet art, yeah, it's really cool. I I agree. Uh, Artist series Thomas Baxter. We have Sliver Hive Lord, Spellskite, Sire of Insanity, and Obnixilus Reignited um i don't have a sliver hive lord if you are looking to get one great great time to pick it up i don't think sliver sliver hive lord is um going up anymore i'm pretty sure i had read a couple of articles that it was actually going down yeah um but 
this is still just a fine pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you can get this in non-foil for 30, foil for 40, and then math is for blockers. So this includes Brazen Bar, Vindictive Lich, Meandering Tower Shell, Orin Frost Fang, and a Thrag Tusk, all with really cool artworks. Yeah, there's actually a YouTube video, I think it was a Good Morning Magic, where they went over how, um, this is called math is for blockers because this artwork is very math and geometrically yes. shaped and themed that way. So yeah, lots of nice round and uh, round shapes on most of these cards, except for the brazen bar, very sharp edges, a lot of triangles and stuff. Very so, cool. So foil for 30, um, or I'm sorry, non-foil for 30, foil for 40, and then you can get a whole bundle in non in non-foil for $119. And you can get the full everything in foil, obviously, except for the the planeswalkers they do not come in foil for 130 so um or for 240 yes is mm. the is the whole is the whole shebang yeah the world's bundliest bundle the world's bundliest bundle so um and that was only the first part of the magic showcase of 2021 that was literally part one yeah. of like eight yeah it's not eight but it's a lot um, so as we know, in the next part of the showcase, they they did talk about uh, Innistrad Midnight Hut and Innistrad Crimson Vow mm -hmm. um, debuting. Uh, we're we're going to start seeing the spoilers or actually we have already started seeing the spoilers for that um, started. They started on September 2nd on Thursday. Um, so we're already seeing that. So we're not going to go too much into it. Um, but there's also some exciting magic news uh, about releases coming soon about the championships and commander parties, as well as an Innistrad double feature pioneer challenge decks and commander collection blacks. So there's a lot to unfold in this next one. We have um, in store and beyond in 2021. So with communities and locations around the world establishing in store play again, Friday night magic imperialist events are two ways to join in the fun already. We know players who can participate are eager for even more opportunities to battle. So they're going to have three uh, of these promo cards that you're going to be able to um, earn uh, by going to your local game store and participating in these events. Um, so there's going to be an Arbor Elf, a collected company and a worm coil engine. So the Arbor Elf is intended to be giving out to all participants in these events, collected company into top eight of these uh, store championship events and worm coil engine to the winner. Um, you know, I'm going to be building a standard deck to try to win this worm coil engine promo <laughs> for sure. Um, so uh, we've already uh, seen some tease of this commander party, a new kind of event to celebrate a return to Innistrad where we will join uh, a faction and jump into a story experience through commander play um, so we haven't actually been able to play this commander party mechanic yet but we know that it's going to happen um, so we look forward to the commander party weekend which is going to happen halloween october 30th and 31st as well as the store championships that are going to happen the first week of december from december 4th to 5th um, and andy why don't you take over for the innistrad double feature because i know you really like this. Yeah, so Innistra Double Feature uh, is going to be coming out early 2022. So this is featuring um, a combination of Innistra Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow into one unique draft experience featuring special art treatments on every card arriving exclusively to local game stores. Again, early 2022. It lets you celebrate a fan favorite setting with its own limited environment in a theatrical style. The artwork is very old school monster movie. I love this. I would like to draft a lot of this. Yeah, it seems like it is going to be fun. It's meant for draft. Innistrad is known for being a fantastic draft environment. Um, and see, cube environment and too, cube. right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that that this is going to live up to the hype because I am hyped. Yeah. Now, alongside here, we have the Commander Challenger decks for 2021. Um, the Lotus Field combo, Mono Red Burn, Azorius Spirit, Spirits, and Orzov Auras, uh, much like the standard Challenger decks that we had uh, a few years back. These are the Pioneer Challenger decks for 2021. Uh, and those are, um, they have complete deck lists already available. They're going to be in early 2022 available. Um, and also alongside that, we are getting Commander Collection Black, uh, which are going to include cards such as Toxic Deluge, Phyrexian Arena, and as we know, the first ever printing of the snake token that Ophiomancer makes. A 1-1 one, one black snake with Death Touch. That's right. So, um, does it, I don't know if it has Death Touch. It does have Death Touch. Oh, okay. Ophiomancer snakes got Death Touch, and we're getting a new Ophiomancer uh, artwork in that too. So, uh, very cool stuff. They're all there. new artwork. Yeah, Ghoul Collar Giza, Ophiomancer, Phyrexian Arena, Reanimate, Toxic Deluge, Soul Ring Command Tower, Liliana Her 
heretical healer. There you go. I love this. Yeah, it's. I know some people were complaining that there wasn't like a big hit card in there like they expected we saw worldly tutor in, in commander collection green toxic deluge being in foil potentially i mean that's this is that's an expensive card had, now had toxic deluge not been reprinted in double masters i think people would not have complained but you can get toxic deluge for under 30 dollars now i get it but you're i mean ophiomancer is expensive mm -hmm. phyrexian arena is expensive yes. reanimate is expensive yes to all but this is like a non-stop bangers ghoul collar giza may not be maybe like and I, it feels weird saying F F Ghoul Color Giza feels like the dud of these. Sure. And it's not. It's not. It's not. This is a really, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a really cool set. I'm definitely picking it up. Um, but I love, I think black's the best color combination in magic. So, and um, I'm excited to hear that they've got some Pioneer decks in the works, though, because we kind of moved on from that really fast. And sure. Pioneer was no longer a priority on Arena because mm -hmm. it was going to be and and then wasn't it was taking a back seat um i am happy to see this because i was starting to get into pioneer and then the pandemic hit and i right. think i had gone to i don't i think i had gone i had gone as far as building a commander deck and we were or going pioneer deck. Uh, that's right a pioneer deck mm -hmm. and um and then it didn't happen right um and i was i it was a deck at the time was going to be with um to to fairy time raveler to fairy Dom, uh it was a it was a blue white control deck right. in pioneer right we had actually recorded mm -hmm. with the mana vault because i had recorded episodes with them yep. um but by the time we had edited those videos cards in the blue white deck that i had built had been banned right so it just never got released yep. which is fine um so <laughs> i i am i am excited though that it is coming back um following up we had magic's 2022 releases so uh we are getting four new standard sets starting with a return to a very far far future Kamiga kamigawa ending with a um blast from the past on dominaria with the brothers war so we are going uh to see Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, The Streets of New Capenna, Dominaria United, and The Brothers War. So um, the uh, the new Kamigawa set, um, it was many years in the making. The feudal past of Kamigawa sets the stage for the far off future when we return to Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, filled with high tech delight, homages to fans favorite, to fan favorites, um, and it's coming to stores in the first quarter of, of 2022. Can't wait for my my Neon uh, Dynasty Shire Shizos Caretaker. It's going to yeah. be pretty sweet. And then Streets of New Capenna. This one looks very interesting. I like this a lot. So it says, traveling after our trip to Kamigawa, like a detective with gumption, the following standard release takes us to the Streets of New Capenna, a city with special significance to Elspeth, built by angels now run by three color demon crime families. We'll race through the streets of New Capenna in the second quarter of 2022, and it definitely looks like uh, Obnixilis and a pinstripe suit. Oh, for sure. And like gold armor. Very much reminds me of that monster from Power Rangers that works with Rita. Oh, yeah. Who is oh, that? I, have, I couldn't I, even I mean, guess. If, if this demon in the artwork for Streets of New Capenna had been blue, I would 100% say that this is going to be our Power Rangers crossover because it's like got that gold armor. Um, I, I don't know the name. It's escaping me. But um, demon crime families. Yeah. And I saw someone say, if the huge and the norm is crime, is, is it crime? Is if it, everything's crime, is it crime? I guess crime <laughs> crime is only crime if it's enforced, right? If law is in, you have to break. But we laws have, have to exist to break. But them. we have five different crime, crime families. families. Yeah, it's just the mafia. This see this set seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. By the way, uh, Goldar is the name. Goldar. Goldar. Yes. Goldar. Streets of New Capenna. There you go. <laughs> That's when we're gonna have our Power Ranger, Power Rangers IP crossover secret <laughs> yeah. layer. Uh, next, Dominar United. Um. So we are going back for the 30th anniversary of Magic: the Gathering. Um. So it says you'll be able to enjoy the original high fantasy magic setting again in the third quarter of 2022. The last time we were in Dominaria, we got what has been heralded as the best limited environment of all time and um if you could draft slime foot draft slime foot because that's what i did every single time um but i'm excited to go back we're gonna probably get a bunch of legendary creatures again for sure seems par for the course probably get some some planeswalkers again too from the gate watch and then ending with the brothers war 
So um, it says, while magic's history stretches back 30 years, the lore of Dominaria itself is much longer. Returning to the pivotal story of Dominaria's and magic's history, what started as a feud between Urza and Mishra erupted into an all-out war that set into motion the future of the plane and multiverse itself. And if Wizards of the Coast doesn't print a commander... A good commander, Mishra. I'm going to be so mad. There's a lot of people that have been looking for that for a long time. Long time. I think there's a combo with that current Mishra. There is. It's the. But I don't know. It's the Proteus staff combo. Is it? It's just because that you yeah. you've just got three. You've got three colors. Mm -hmm. Um. So that that is where we are going with our four standard sets next year. Yes. And now after, well, maybe not necessarily after time wise, um, but outside of the standard set, we have our next unset. I am so beyond excited for this. I can't even tell you. Yeah, I that, love Unmatched. Just the one little piece of artwork that they have here. It, it so looks awesome. Colorful. So the the uh, covers. <clears throat> so um, we're, we're going we're gonna to go into the unset. This one is called Unfinity. So it's magic. It's in space. It's retro futuristic fun meets a space carnival. And you, you got to see it to believe it. So Unfinity brings the joy and celebration of combining magic's mechanics with new characters, plenty of laughs, plus beautiful science fiction themed full art basic lands and shock lands bow, bow, bow. in both draft and collector booster <clears throat> packs releasing in the second quarter of 2022. Um, so I'm I'm not usually one that's super excited about unsets, uh, but I do like space. I don't know if you uh, heard me last week talk about the job that I wanted to be when I grew up, but it was astronaut. And this is about space. So that's it's pretty a cool. space carnival idea. I love it. And I, I'm sure the basics are going to be sweet. I can't I can't wait. Um, and then after that, we've got. Our, our next Commander Legends uh, product. So this is Dungeons and Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander Legends. So the debut of Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms brought a mix of magic and D&D &D to life in amazing ways with more stories and characters from the Forgotten Realms to share, focusing on the city of Baldur's Gate and combining on Commander first game, Commander first gameplay of 2019's Commander Legends. Our return to Commander Draft with Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate brings in iconic characters, new mechanics, more flavorful spells from D&D, plus Commander Legend style foil etched legendary creatures, all packed into an even greater social experience. This is coming out in the second quarter of 2022. I'm excited about this, but I really enjoyed Commander Legends and AFR draft environments. So the combination of the two makes sense that I would like these. Yeah, I think for the for draft, this will probably be a lot of fun. I'm not I'm personally not hot on this right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know a ton of D D, to be honest. Right. And and I feel like this is just going to be a lot of people being upset and complaining they don't get <laughs> the specific character that they wanted to be in the set. I'll be honest. Well, Twitter's gonna be up in a flurry. It's only about Baldur's Gate. Correct. Uh, so it, they're definitely not gonna get everything that you want. Because no. D D D is so expansive outside of these two couple modules. But I think so far. they'll make up for it if they can bring back partners and two colors. I'll take that. Shh. Okay, new two color partners. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Some more fair ones or just as strong as uh, you want another Thrasios? Well, it's, they're going to have to be fair because okay. they can combine them with Thrasios. Oh, fair. Double Thrasios. They're going to have... No. <laughs> no. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I'm keeping my hopes moderate. Okay. Hopes are moderate. Uh, with that, we are going into the first um, supplementary set here. Well, I guess not supplement. The first uh, ancillary set here, Double Masters 2022. Um, so everything fans loved about Double Masters, two foil cards, two rares or mythic rare cards in each draft booster is back in Double Masters 2022 with more powerful reprints and a multicolor draft focus. Um, all this and more arrives in the third quarter of 2022. Honestly, not impressed with just the same master set that we just had, but yeah, I mean, that's okay. It's for reprints. That's all. That's, that's, that's what true. we're getting. That's here. true. Jumpstart 2022. Um, we are going to be getting more jumpstart. So they're excited to share that tabletop gets a new twist on jumpstart with jumpstart 2022 arriving in stores around the world in the fourth quarter. So the end of next year um, says leaping to new heights. Jumpstart 2022 combines packed uh, comes packed with new booster fun card treatment. A new to magic card in every pack, dozens of themes to mix and match for fun with plenty of amazing reprints for every fan to enjoy. I've been playing a lot of Jumpstart uh, Historic on Arena lately. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Really cool cards. Really good stuff. Hope we get to see some of them uh, in Jumpstart 2022. All right. And uh, 
another topic that they covered here is exploring universes beyond. So Magic the Gathering universes beyond earlier this year, we shared an early peek at some of the incredible magic to come with universes beyond. Today we blew, or sorry, this is the announcement. They blew the doors off the new details and exciting artwork. 2022 has beyond sets up magic players to explore even more incredible wor worlds and stories. So we're going to see uh, Warhammer 40,000 in commander style decks, and they released some of the artworks in here. Honestly, very surprised that uh, there are guns in the artwork here, something that that I don't think Magic has really done in the past. We have Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth, um, which is also going to be arriving in 2023. So you're not going to see that uh, next year. There's a couple secret layer announcements. There's going to be a secret layer that releases alongside Lord of the Rings. And uh, there's also a partnartnership with Fortnite. There's going to be a and secret Street layer Fortnite Fighter. and Street Fighter. So, um, yeah, we're, we're as we're preparing for rotation, there's a lot of stuff coming. So, um, you know, check that out. We'll probably get a lot more announcements coming up real soon. Coil, um, what are we talking about this week? Um, this week, we are going to talk about the most expensive deck themes based on popular deck themes on EDHREC.com. All right. So before we continue, though. We want to thank our patrons. Thank you so much for supporting us. Um, if you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com and donate for any dollar amount. Um, patreon.com slash guardian project pod. Uh, we've got lots of fun things to give away and we appreciate every single one of you. And if you're looking for another way to support the podcast, whatever platform you're enjoying the podcast on, if you could rate, subscribe, review and leave comments, we would really appreciate it. And you can find us online at the guardian project podcast.com. You can find our social media on Twitter at guardian pod gameplay videos at youtube.com slash the guardian project. And you can email us at guardian project pod at gmail.com. So let's pull out our wallets because it's getting real expensive. Yeah, it is. All right, so Coil did some number crunching for us. So why don't you lay out how we broke down these top themes and what we're going to talk about? All right, let me get my glasses on here real quick. So as a setup, we took the top 21 deck themes on EDA Trek, uh, which are Artifact, Aristocrat, Life Gain, Wheel, Land, Sacrifice, Plus One, Plus One, Connors, Equipment, Pod, Aura, Enchantment, Token, Planeswalker, Spell Slinger, Mill, Blink, Discard, Toughness Matters, Graveyard Matters, Sunforger, Bounce, and Ninjutsu. So those are the top 21 deck themes outside of creature deck themes like Elf and, and Merfolk and that kind of stuff. Um, so we took the top 21 themes. And within each one of those themes, you will find a top 24 commanders um, that have at least 15 decks built for them. In some of these themes, like the ninjutsu theme, there, there isn't 24 commanders. So for those, there's a little bit less. Um, but we, we took all 24 commanders when available. We took the average deck for each of these commanders through these deck lists into TCG player to find out exactly what this deck was going to cost and then averaged out those 24 decks within each theme to find the average price for each theme so we could determine the most expensive and least expensive deck themes to play commander via edh rec via tcg player it was a lot of work it's so much work and i'm so excited to talk about these because i i'll be honest you're not going to expect which ones were the top definitely not. honestly definitely when, not. when we got to our answer i was blown <laughs> away i honestly was blown away and now there's going to certainly be some anomalies that affect the oh, prices yeah. of some of these decks and we'll certainly talk about that but let's jump into it starting at number five actually before we jump into it what were some of the assumptions so we had made some assumptions mm -hmm. about these decks and personally i thought decks that were going to be more colors were going to be more expensive. Obviously, your mana bases are going to be more expensive. Yes. That was one of my assumptions. Yes. And then I I thought Planeswalker decks would also be more expensive. Yes. Just because they're extremely popular and a lot of the cards that support Planeswalker decks can be expensive, like doubling seasons. Yes. Totally agree. Um, I think there is also a lot less. And I know it's going to sound weird when I say a lot less variety in Planeswalker decks, but by that I mean... Um, uh, Cost wise, I think there's a lot less varieties in Planeswalker decks where if you're playing a storm deck, you can build budget storm or you can build expensive storm. When it comes to super friends and Planeswalkers, I think there's really only one budget and it's expensive. So I, I definitely expected to see Planeswalkers at the tippy top. I thought it was going to be no comparison whatsoever. Most expensive is super friends, five color super friends decks or four color super friends decks. Yeah, your, your attractions and everything. Um, but I also thought that older decks probably would be more expensive with people refining them, building more of them or people that built decks 10 years ago that the deck list still exists 
and it's just now uh, more expensive because it was built 10 years ago. I, I made an assumption that decks that have blue would be more expensive mm -hmm. and that decks that use a lot of fast mana. And, yep. and we, we took into account the average basic deck. We didn't select expensive specific. Right. We we went through all the, the we just went through the themes of the average decks of these commanders. Yeah. Um and I I I just assumed that blue would be more and and also cards that or decks that run a lot of quote unquote staples yeah. are going to be more expensive just because a lot of those staples are expensive. Your smothering tithes, your cyclonic rifts, if you consider those staples, a lot of people specifically don't play with them. But cards that are running all of those, I mean you can you can hit two hundred dollars like like nothing yeah, when, you, when you run all the staples. So coming in actually, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work our way from number five all the way up to the most expensive deck. Number five here is actually the planeswalker themed decks. Yeah, it's, so I, I think it's crazy to see it at number five. For sure, I thought it was gonna be number one. Um, and so we have an we have an average deck price here of six hundred and thirty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents. Uh, with a top end of the mm -hmm. average Essica God of the Tree deck being $1,179.54, which goes absolutely in the opposite direction of what I had just mentioned of I thought the new commanders would be cheaper because a lot of times when someone builds a new commander, they do build them based off the cards in the standard set that they were printed in. So people might do an Essica block commander set or, right. or commander deck or something. Obviously, I was wrong. You were, you were, but that's that's. I didn't expect Essica to be honest, but also the most affordable of these mm -hmm. decks is a mono red Chandra Fire of Kaladesh deck. Yes, coming in around two hundred and eighty three dollars based on TCG mid. Have you played against a mono red Chandra Planeswalker deck before? Um, we have. Yeah, we have. Mana curves. Yes. Uh, Chase has been on our stream twice, and I believe brought Chandra twice to to the stream, mm -hmm. and we got crushed by it. Uh, at least one. Of at those least times. one time. At least yeah. one of those times. So, um, taking a look at, at the Planeswalker theme, the top commanders here: Karth the Lion, Atraxa, Asaka, Mila, um, Crafty Companion, Sisse. I mean, we've got Golos, Nicol Bolas. So, um. You know, nothing surprising there as no. far as the commander goes. Um, but when you average these, they man, they these decks are expensive. But looking at the most expensive of these, there are five colors. Sisse, Essica, uh, Joda, the the Niv Mizzet Reborn. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of these are under six hundred dollars. Right. I think the one exception to that is our um Nickel Bolas. Uh, right, that one is kind of. A, oh no, that one's only six hundred and seventy dollars. I only. was looking at. I was looking at Golos <laughs> above it. Well, because I was comparing it to the thousand dollar Golos deck right above it. Um, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The more colors uh, you can you get into it, it it's going to be end up being more expensive. These deck lists could be including the original dual lands absolutely. from Revised and all this. So I mean. Um, if you're if you're if you're wondering, you know, maybe Wheels is going to be on this list. Maybe Wheel of Fortune would be included in every single one of those deck lists too. And once it's you possible, it's in some of these that right. are affecting these numbers. But when you look at these top cards here, played in Planeswalker decks, you've got the Chain Veil, twenty two dollars. Oh yeah, you've got Spark Double, which is nine dollars. Teferi Time Raveler is sixteen dollars. Nickel Bolas Planeswalker, which fortunately has been reprinted, um, is, is more affordable, um, but it's still around. Five dollars here, but Cyclonic Rift, Oko, um, the, the, the top cards that are played in some of these decks are just they're just they add up so quickly for sure. And on top of the fact that Planeswalkers themselves are just also expensive. I mean, cheaper nowadays, honestly, Planeswalkers back in the day before there was collector's editions and four different artworks of your Teferi in that one core set that one time and all that uh, Planeswalkers were mythic, rare and expensive. And if you had a, a, a Planeswalker deck back then, I mean, you were you were in the money for sure. Yeah. Doubling season here is around sixty two dollars. The nice thing that I see here is Deep Close Gate has gone down. Oh, yeah. It's around three. But Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, which is included in in sixty three percent of these decks now, it's thirty one dollars. Oh yeah. Some of these these top cards here are are just they 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 bump it up. Elspeth Sun's champion, um, and Teferi Master of Time. Yeah. And and if you've ever played a planeswalker deck, especially a multicolor one, you know that the the mana base for them 
you know, in order for it to be consistent, you do need to have a, a pretty strong mana base and expensive mana base. And when you do that, you're going to want to play your, as Andy said, your expensive staples, your Ristic Studies, your Vampiric Tutors, your Esper Sentinel, Sentinels and all that stuff that you can get to draw more cards into Planeswalkers, provide blockers for your Planeswalkers and that kind of stuff. Um, that's that's what your Planeswalker decks end up being. They end up being good stuff permanents because planeswalkers are pretty much good stuff of permanence. the top four enchantments you've got smothering tithe and ristic study in both For both sure. of a johnny and Ex inexorable tide as well um and i do think though that had we run this maybe three months ago mm -hmm. before we had modern horizons too it might be more expensive because of those fetch lands that are probably being pulled from the current printing which are right now Pretty affordable. Oh, extremely affordable. If you are looking to pick up fetches, we are not a finance podcast. If you're looking to pick up fetches, you should probably do it soon. Right. So let's move on to our next theme here. This is this is number four. Coil, what do we have here? The number four theme we have here is Enchantment. enchantment. Sorry, I had my little tabs mixed <laughs> up there for a second. Yes, our number four theme here is enchantments. Um, so our average deck price for enchantments is $671.08. Our most expensive enchantment deck is, hey, Essica, God of the Tree at $1,298.48. So again, a five color commander. Typically when you're talking about an enchantment commander, you're really only doing uh, two or three colors. We see five colors with Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, um, you have your three colors in Bant with like Tuvasa and Estrid. You have even three colors in Mardu with Gen, which is you know, a, a little out there even for that. Zer the Enchanter at Esper, Alila at Esper. You have Golos again here. I guess Farika is pretty unique at Golgari with black and green. It's actually the only um, uh, commander you can play if you want to use the enchantment only companion, the companion where you choose a permanent type. It's the black and green. Umori. Umori. You can choose you can choose enchantment and Farika is the only commander you can have. Interesting. It's the only way you could do it. Utropia, the twice favored, coming in at of the, of these these that are listed in this category as most expensive. Utropia mm -hmm. is the most affordable at one hundred and ninety one dollars. Yeah, I think I think that might be the most affordable average deck in the whole thing. The only other one I'm looking up right now, there is a Utropia uh, aura deck that is less expensive. But uh, yeah. I, it just seems like people maybe are building that budget just to begin with because it's already an uncommon commander, um, perhaps. But it could be being built as Voltron as well, right? Because mm -hmm. you're giving you're giving things flying there. But looking at um, just the top cards for um, in the enchantment theme, you've got Ghostly Prison, Argothian Enchantress, which is around thirty dollars. Uh, Smothering Tie, thirty dollars. Um, Ristic Study, again, thirty dollars. Uh, Dryad of the Elysian Grove, $16. So, I mean, they add up again very quickly here. Um, we are seeing more Ristic Studies being included in Smothering Tide. It seems like a lot of these decks are running them if they can. Um, understandably, understandably, but Argothian Enchantress, uh, Shroud, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. Absolutely powerhouse in these types of decks. Very expensive, but looking even at high synergy cards, um, some of these top cards here um, are some of the more affordable cards, though. Um, Sanctum of All, Enchantress's Presence, Eidolon of Blossoms, Mesa Enchantress, Seder Enchanter. These ones are all actually under a dollar. Yeah, I think we got a lot of support um, in the last Theros set that we got at the beginning of the year. Um, so we got a lot of enchantment help there. We've been seeing some enchantment reprints in this last AFR Commander Legends set, uh, bringing down the price of some of the cards like Imprisoned in the Moon. So enchantments is actually getting more affordable, despite it being our fourth most expensive archetype here. Yeah, you know, taking a look, I, I just wanted to see some more of these cards that might be spiking this price here. We've got Privileged Position, which mm -hmm. is giving other permanents you control um, basically, Shroud says other permanents you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. And that's that's $17. And then Starfield of Nyx, which is when I used to run an enchantment-based deck, which was around Estrid the Masked, I ran Starfield of Nyx as a win condition. And that card is uh, $14. It turns your um, non-aura enchantments into creatures with power and toughness equal to their mana value. Yeah. Now, if you if you take, uh, you know, you take one of these decks, these five color decks, we talked about it already. 
they're going to have a five color mana base. That's probably where a big chunk of the money is coming from. But we also talked about a couple staples that could increase the price here. And there is Academy Rector. Academy Rector is pushing over $130 oh now. Oh my gosh. A four mana uh, creature cleric that says whenever Academy Rector is put into a graveyard from play, you may remove Academy Rector from the game. If you do search your library for an enchantment card and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. That's an extremely powerful effect, especially when you talk about enchantments like omniscience and stuff that just make us you could cast stuff for oh. free. I want to play Omniscience again. <laughs> you want to play Academy a, Rector Omniscience? It's been a well, it's been a minute since I played an Omniscience. I I do have a, a, a Joda deck that has Omniscience mm-hmm. in it. Um, no, I th- I have I haven't looked at enchantment decks in a very long time, and five color seems like it does seem really fun. Yeah. Um, I know I have a I had a three color auras deck, three color enchantment auras. Um, which is technically would fall under the auras category and not the enchantments category, but it was in Bant. And I will say it's it was probably um, a middle middle of the road uh, price in terms of the average deck prices here, probably around, you know, three, three to four hundred dollars for that, mostly from the, the, the mana base. Yeah. And there's one more big, big outlier card here, which is only included in some of these mm-hmm. likely, which is a land that produces a lot of white mana named Sarah's Sanctum. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm very sad I sold out of this card when it was at like $110 because I was like, I don't I don't need this card. Um, I, I still don't need it. You absolutely don't need it. It's just, it can be a powerhouse. But this card is at $330 now. I mean, that, I mean, that alone is half the price of many of these decks is it more- just that card if it's included and it looks like it's in 32 percent of these decks yeah it's, it's more expensive than i think four or five of these decks actually just right. by itself right all right so let's move on to the next theme here we've got lands matters mm-hmm. so we are looking at um uh, on on the high end here for lands um it looks like we're around uh, $1,400, which is a Thrasios and Vile Smasher deck. Yeah, so maybe if we started, Ooh. if we said Thrasios Vile Smasher is a $1,400 deck, maybe people wouldn't be that surprised. But if we said it was a Lands Matter deck, maybe they would be. Yeah, and 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 looking around the, the lower end here, it looks like the lowest is o- Oboon. Which is so interesting that that was a built for Commander Naya deck meant to utilize these lands matters themes and mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's because of the colors it's running it's naya so we're not including black or blue sure so it's entirely possible that there's black and blue cards in this theme that are that are maybe spiking the prices but let's take a look at some of the uh the top commanders here it looks like we've got omnath locus of creation um everything but black there lord Windgrace super strong oh yeah land lands matters commander omnath locus of the royal ac tyrant of gyre straight tatiova i mean all of these commanders are what i think when i see a lands matters deck for sure um yeah the average deck price for these lands matters is 725 dollars and 56 cents so it's definitely up there and, and honestly when we, i mean we've repeated this for the last two subjects of talking about five color decks being more expensive because of their land base and their mana base so for a lands matter deck to be expensive i shouldn't be surprised but i was i don't know why (laughs) it's like every single one of these that has landfall in it i i might shove every single fetch land that i can i mean we don't even see um uh uh titania on here that is a mono green lands matter deck um i think we see titania in in the sacrifice category rather than the lands matter category here um but but even there i mean it's 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 mono color and I'm still probably playing every single fetch land that could fetch a forest. Right. So looking at some of these top cards here, we've got Crucible of Worlds, around forty dollars. Huge. Exploration, if you've got green, it's seventeen dollars. Mm-hmm. Um Oracle of Moldiah, if you've got green, twenty dollars. Um and if you're in blue, Cyclonic Rift is on this list. Yeah, of course. Tatiova's in blue, <laughs> a size in blue. The the Omnaths, the last two mm-hmm. are in blue. Um I'm I'm not surprised to see the, these top cards here, but I do like seeing cards like Felidar Retreat listed in here, and then your basic land ramp package. But those cards are not are not causing it to spike. But if you look at top cards, um, or I'm sorry, high synergy cards, um, none of these are really outliers here. I mean, Ancient Green Warden's around ten. Um, Dried Elysian Grove is around sixteen dollars. But Scoot Swarms. It's getting up there. It's it's already four fifty, almost five dollars. That card is bananas. Yeah, still standard legal rare from from Zendikar. 
Um, it, it's one of the best land, I would say the best landfall card that we received this year. Um, don't quote me on that in case there's something better that I'm not thinking of, but clip um, this and uh, quote, quote, no, don't do that. Yep. And then scape shift <clears throat> even at $17 here. Yeah. It, Wonderful card. A lot of these cards did get the benefit of being reprinted, uh, relatively recently. Um, I know Azusa had a, a core set reprinting recently and Lotus Cobra. we we got in Zendikar in a couple different artworks too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, crop rotation we got in mystery boosters and double masters. Um, so a lot of these are becoming more affordable and yet still the third most expensive deck theme that we have yeah looking at the enchantments this deck that that this theme plays uh, burgeoning around 22 bucks again ristic studies on here but we've even got sylvan library listed on some of these 25 percent of these of all these decks is running a sylvan library that's a 40 dollar card but um one that that really is related to this theme only squandered resources mm. Love me some squandered, squandered resources. resources. It's an enchantment for black and green. So sacrifice a land, add one man of any color to your mana pool that that or one man of any type that sacrifice land could produce. You do this as a mana source. Um, you can get all your lands back with a few different cards. Um, Splendid reclamation. Oh, yeah. It's just so cool i think i talked about this in the, an episode where where we said and for that i'm sorry um but i have squandered resources i'm always reminded back when i had my eldrazi deck i took your turn when you were playing lord wingrace and i sacrificed your entire board he did to your squandered resources i had a i had a card in hand to bring them all back yeah and then he just passed i was like yeah Gone. I, I, it's, it's tough to sabotage someone's turn, but, yeah. but you did it. I did. You and did it I, well. I don't have that. I don't have an Eldrazi deck anymore. And I, and I have not sabotaged anyone since that sabotage. You, you, you did it well, but these decks also play like field of the dead, just, you know, lands that care about lands, Urborg, tomb of Yagmoth, Lotus field is around $10. So this theme, um, I, we can see why it's pricey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, how about this next theme, which I bet you would never have guessed that this theme, I, bet, I, I wouldn't even have guessed of this as honestly like a theme title. I wouldn't, no, no. So the theme is Sacrifice. It sure is. Which I assumed was Aristocrats, but it's not because Aristocrats is a creature-based theme ba versus sacrificing just any permanent Any theme. permanent that you want. So the average deck price of a <laughs> sacrifice deck is $1,815.11. And I think that has a lot to do with this outlier that is Cody Vociferius Codex having an average deck price of $13,906.17 because it includes every single OG duel, every single fetch, and every single shock. Didn't even look at the rest of I the like deck I like how list. you pronounce Vociferous. 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 <laughs> whatever. I'm not an English major. That book would be chasing me around campus all day. There's, I mean, Jessica Timna is $4,500. Mm -hmm. Chatterfang, $3,800. Yeah. Extus, okay. 4, so there are definitely outliers For sure. here. Some of these decks are being built with ridiculous mana bases, I assume, which is fine. Mm hmm. Um, if you got it, use it. Well, I mean, for sure. And if you're thinking about uh, like sacrifice kind of stuff, um, I know we we have a ton of uh, food synergy now. We have a ton of treasure synergy now that we didn't have before. So even your cards like Dockside Extortionist that are already expensive are are going to be seeing even more play and getting more expensive. That's a fifty dollar card that's going to be included in every single one of these sacrifice decks that includes the color red. And Glissa the Trader is listed as the most affordable of mm -hmm. these decks, mm -hmm. coming in around three hundred and thirteen dollars. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know I see cards like the Gitrog Monster in here at three thousand dollars. I'm assuming. <laughs> The average deck price. I mean, I know that there's there's one land that costs three thousand dollars that some people put in their Get Rock Monster decks. Um, the, mm, you know, I can't even remember the name of the Manalus Dredge land that all uh, Bazaar of Baghdad. Mm. found it you figured it out i figured it out and it didn't take me a whole episode this time <laughs> <laughs> so looking at the the top cards here at, uh for sacrifice decks we've got ashnod's altar 10 bucks <gasps> smothering tides on the list again haro is on the list but that's only 30 cents so we're not seeing any of the crazy expensive cards yet. assassin's trophy 20 bucks mm -hmm. um 
continuing down this list, uh, I think that the, the next one is is Pitiless Plunderer around twelve dollars. Crazy that uncommon from Rivals of Ixalan is twelve dollars now, but it synergizes so well again with all of the new treasure token synergy. Right. So I think one of the more expensive cards in this deck is Dockside Extortionist. Has to be. It it's it's fifty two dollars now based on on TCG play at the time of recording. Um, uh, Mystic Remora has cumulative upkeep. It does technically sacrifice when you don't pay that. That's true. Um, so there, there are some expensive cards here. Eternal Witness, four bucks. Glenelendra, Archmage at nine dollars. But again, we've got. It looks like there's a lot of support that's being used in these mm -hmm. decks. That's very expensive. Um, certainly very expensive lands. Phyrexian Tower here is at sixteen dollars already. Urborg. Um, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth is ten dollars. Urza Saga is twenty two, and it does get sacrificed, I guess, for at sure. The end. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah. I mean, a, a ton of these, a ton of these commanders themselves. There's a few exceptions. Don't have the ability to sacrifice the permanents themselves. Like take for uh, Korvald, for instance. You only sacrifice stuff when it enters the battlefield and when he attacks. Um, so obviously with a majority of these themes, you're going to be able to need to find your sacrifice outlets. So a lot of these are playing as many tutors as they can to find them. Uh, every deck that's playing black is going to be playing your vampiric tutors and your demonic tutors. Uh, any deck that includes white is going to be playing enlightened tutors. So you can find your Ashnod's altar or your Phyrexian altars and stuff like that. Uh, creature tutors in green to find your Viscera seers and all that. So, um, I think this, this particular list since your deck doesn't work just with your commander and needs some cards in your deck too, is also going to be going up in price because of these tutors. Yeah, taking a look at even just some more um, sacrifice elements here, Goblin Bombardment. Some of these these came down in price, which is nice. Um, you've got a Pernicious Deed here. It does sacrifice itself, but Pernicious Deed itself still around five bucks. But again, looking at some of these, they've got cards like Sylvan Library mixed in with a Revel in Riches, a couple bucks there, Exploration. So we're certainly seeing that these decks, as we move up the tier, they're playing a lot of these staple cards yep. that are just very, very expensive. But let's move on to our most expensive theme, which... Drum roll, please. Is a pod themed deck. So these are decks that are sacrificing creatures to get other creatures with higher mana value. But why um, is this the most expensive deck archetype? Yeah. So so taking a look at pod, the the average the average of all of these is two thousand eight hundred and twenty eight dollars and eighty cents. <laughs> Um, looking at the highest, the highest price deck here is Tevizot and Thrasios mm -hmm. at $12,250 and 70 cents. Um, and this is no foils, by the way. This is, uh, sure. There's no foils. <laughs> there's no foils. Imagine it being all foils and like <laughs> tripling the price of this deck. Um, I mean, there's so many decks over $5,000 here. Thrasios, Timna, uh, you've got. Kenrith the Return King, Bruce Tarl Thrasios, us assuming, assume making some assumptions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's really good mana bases and all staples in these that are showing up as five, six, thirteen thousand sure. dollars for sure. I mean, I, I think it's even like what's 12, the, what's the lowest price on here is a three hundred eight dollar and ninety three cents uh, Ryami First of the Fallen deck. I mean, that's even. Pretty, I mean, three hundred dollars is your lowest average price deck here. Uh, I would, I would say this twelve thousand dollars is definitely an anomaly. But the next price down is what eight thousand that I see, or is it only four thousand? Four, the six thousand seventy three at a Kenrith deck. So it's really not that far, not that much of an anomaly. This twelve thousand dollar because the six thousand dollar deck is not an anomaly in this list. It's it's. It appears reasonable. to be we're using, <laughs> air air quotes. Quotes. we're using air quotes for it being, <laughs> yeah, yeah, reasonable. So looking at high synergy cards, now you're building decks here specifically based on mana values on the individual creatures you're playing. So mm -hmm. you're you're running creatures specifically at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, and, and the list goes 
you know, up from there. Yeah, and you're comboing. And you're comboing, right? So you know you're playing a combo deck. You're running cards like Neoform. You're running cards like Eldritch Evolution. Um, we have some new commanders that work really well with a pod with with the pod theme. Minsk Beloved Ranger. I built a, a Minsk deck that I um, specifically tutored. I grabbed out a um, uh, the Protean Hulk. I sacrificed, but I I wasn't I wasn't playing like Revel Art combo. I right. just I sacrificed it and grabbed two other creatures that were cool here. Mm -hmm. um, but you can certainly combo out very easily. Um, one of the the most recently released deck, uh, commanders in probably the last yeah two two years within the last two years um, might even be more now. Prime Speaker Vanifar mm -hmm. from Ravnica Allegiance was was looked at as as a combo commander. This is going to be crazy. It you certainly can. I think the the problem with Pod that I've heard people say is they got bored yeah. because you're, you're tutoring up the same chain. If you're trying to win it's always the same and, chain. and it's always the same, mm -hmm. right? But taking a look at even just the high synergy cards, noble hierarch is a one mana uh, creature, right? Um, that it's $17 birds of paradise, one mana, it's $12 death, right? Shaman, uh, $7 Doxi extortionist is on two. Uh, we're looking at $52 again, mm -hmm. um, but you're tutoring with lots of answers. So this deck is running opposition agent or this theme opposition. Hull Breacher was probably in it before it was banned because you for could sure. grab it as an answer off of a one or a two or whatever it was that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, Enlightened Tutor is going to grab you cards you need to start your chain. It's a very cool theme, and I've actually never played against the pod deck. Okay. I know I've played I played pod cards in decks, but I not play a pod, pod cards deck. too. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a birthing I own a birthing pod mm -hmm. and that's in my my mince deck. It seemed really fun to play there. I have um Eldritch Evolution. I don't know if I've played Neoform in one of my commander decks before, but it's it's a cool theme, but it's it's very expensive. But looking, you know, at the top cards here, Swan Song is a is a ten dollar card, uh deflecting SWAT. Cyclonic Rift, Fierce Guardianship, Ristic Study. Yeah. So this is playing. These are packed full of. Yeah. This is this is what we call what we call staples. Yeah. And protection and combo, and that's the whole deck all the way through. Which makes sense. It does because because you're trying to do one specific thing, and if if it interrupts your chain, and for some reason you had grabbed or drew all of your three mana value creatures and you couldn't continue right you're going to run into you know or you can't continue for two turns because you need so now you have to cast the three mana creature to kill it to get your four mana creature right yeah right so uh eternal witness again we're seeing here mystical tutor to grab more cards that you need um i really really like this theme um did not expect this to be number one yeah, I guess now that I'm, Not I'm, at all. I'm, 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 I've drifted into the two CMC uh, creature section here, and I see cards like Dark Confidant, Bloom Tender, Gilded Drake, Grand Abolisher, all well over twenty dollars a card. Gilded Drake over four hundred dollars for the card. Um, Looking at mana artifacts now, you can tell that a lot of these themes are being built specifically for this. I mean, it's a combo. You're looking to do it. it, it mana Crypt is listed in almost 50% of these decks. Yeah. And, and you're at $135 there. Mox Diamond is listed in 30% of 29% of these decks right now. That's mm -hmm. $647. So removing that, removing your Chrome Moxes, removing your Jeweled Lotus, all those things are certainly helping you get off the ground sooner because certain decks these rely on the commander and some sure. of them. Oswald Fiddlebender. Yeah, we saw as it. a as a pod deck is not listed here, but is listed under the artifact theme. Right. Funny enough, is doing this, but with artifacts. Right. So pulling up the Os Oswald's going for an average of one thousand seven hundred sixty one dollars and thirty eight cents for his deck over in the artifact theme. Um, so if you were wondering if you were if you were in the mindset that you thought artifacts was going to be the most expensive because of the expensive fast man artifacts, just know that there's a ton of people out there <laughs> building decks without good art, without the best artifacts. I shouldn't say without good artifacts, without the best zero mana drops. Yeah. But those Oswald decks, oh yeah, they're playing all of them. They're playing all of them. And that's the list of the top five most expensive deck themes that you can build um, based on EDH rec excluding creature creature theme decks so um this was a lot of fun and we actually are going to be back next week with the most affordable yes. of these themes again what's it gonna you be? will be surprised at which ones you d that did not make <laughs> the top and, and which ones were just kind of in the middle all right so so far we've listed 21 themes you're gonna have to record the episode because i'm not gonna say them all again 
and five of the themes were the top five. So you're down to 14 themes. You guess what the most five affordable because I know you're not going to do what I did to figure this out because it's going to take you way too much time. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you all for listening. If you want to contact us, you can you can find me on Twitter at ATFlor. And you can find me on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. Of course, we want to give a special shout out to our editor and producer, Ryan Nichols. Thank you so much for all that you do. We appreciate it a lot. And we want to give another shout out to Chris Wolf, who handles all of our graphic design. Thank you for all of you do. We appreciate you so much. And to all you listeners out out there we appreciate all that you do and we thank you so much and we'll talk to you next week goodbye bye bye goodbye now adios <laughs> au revoir uh bis später it's aggressive bis morgen i don't know german <laughs> <laughs> Are we unsure of which one it was? Bis später is see you later, and bis morgen is see you in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Well, if you listen to us in the morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs>